when you see a variety of differences like we are in this sample here so that many phases exist one way we can document this is through x-ray mapping with the compact esprit to access that we're going to click on mapping and now my controls are capture for the image so I can either capture single frame continuous or use the sliding average and still have the numbering capability so I can update my frame right now all right. On acquire, that's to acquire the map, I have a choice of manually, in other words, keep collecting until I tell you to stop, based on time, and it'll finish the frame. So if frame's taken 20 seconds and I tell it to collect for 130, it'll finish the frame completely. It'll just not stop. And then number of cycles or passes, how many frames I want to do. I can also elect to do a, a subset of the collected image, which we call either variable or fixed. And in doing that, I simply click on the box that will highlight it in red. And then I can pick up a corner and adjust the frame. Let me stop the acquisition. So with that now, I can choose to elect a subset of this entire image. Or in this case, I'm going to do the entire frame. So I'm going to set it to full. After measurement, again, I can predetermine exactly where I want my data saved, so I can have it automatically save the information for me. I can set up the averaging for the live image that's collected with it. Automatic numbering again, and I, this is for any objects I extract within the map itself. So with that, I'm going to stay in manual mode right now. I'm currently at 120,000 counts a second. I'm going to hit acquire. Now if I haven't told it any elements, the system will automatically do an automatic ID and select the major elements that are coming in. At any point in time, I can bring up the periodic table tool and add additional elements. So for instance, I know I saw a magnesium phase earlier. I can click on that and now that's being brought in. Whether I do it at the beginning of the map, during the map, or post acquisition, I still get all the x-rays. We are collecting every single photon within this field of view. So you'd never sacrifice or lose any aspect of, of the system. At this point in time, I also have other controls located here. So I can do dynamic averaging of the maps themselves, which is a nice tool sometimes, particularly when we first start collecting, if the statistics are poor, to kind of see where the major groupings of elements are. So for instance, I'm going to, using these check boxes, I can turn off what maps I'm viewing together. And now I can select to look at one map or another. And I can t then turn the averaging off at any point in time. And we can see what the functions do. That's a three-point average versus a three-point smooth versus an automatic, which is a combination of the two based on the current statistics. And as I said, this is a nice tool sometimes to see groupings when the statistics are poor. Once the statistics have improved, this is a function typically we don't need to use and we can turn that off. Uh, you have the choice of displaying your maps in absolute or relative scaling and there is built-in online deconvolution. So if t we have an overlap in the system, the system will break the overlap apart and show us the two individual components. So at this point now I can bring back the image, I can increase the saturation of the color, I can adjust brightness and contrast levels, I can also adjust gamma within the system. And then I can also remix uh, pseudo colorings if I wish. So if I want to use a different color palette, a pseudo color palette to show relative intensities based on color, I can do that as well. If I wish, utilizing the annotations now, I can come in here and say, I'd like to see a spectrum from this region over here versus this region here versus this region here. So I've selected three different regions. Click on spectrum. The system is showing me the overall spectrum right now. It's also showing you the ROIs for each of the maps that we're collecting. Now those are all adjustable. So if I press the right mouse button on any element, this is where I can come in and if I wish to make a ROI 
wider, normal default, narrower, or anything in between. I can set it myself. All right. Medium is about the normal. This is roughly uh, 1.2 times the full with half max, which is the considered to be the optimal. The system also, if I have a choice of multiple lines, will let me select them here. So in the case of iron, I could elect to look at the iron K alpha, the K beta, or the L line. And as soon as I click on it, the map would be cho changed from the K line to the L line. So if, we, if I go to map now, now we're looking at the map based on the iron L line. And again, you can change that at any point in time. In addition to that with the spectrum, any additional elements that I find. So for instance, over here, utilizing any of my tools of identification, I can simply point to a peak and see that we have a calcium peak. So I can click on it, it brings it up, and immediately will add that to the, my list of elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change, make the image larger, click on map, and down here, here is my calcium map overlaid onto my image. So this is the overall spectrum map. So this is all the x-rays within this field of view. Utilizing these tools down here where it says results, again, remember, any place you see a triangle or an arrow, there's a menu. So if I click on that, here's all the things I can look at. So right now I want to look at the spectrum information. And what this shows me is how long I've been collecting total, my dead time, total number of counts within the map, and also that spectrum, what my input and output count rates are, and then what process mode am I currently using. All right, so right now we see we've got about 32 million counts, which is pretty good. I can come in here and look at any one individually. So this is the spectrum from this red area here in 1, here's in 2. So again, if we compare those two spectrum, we see that we have silicon and iron in both of them. I'm going to turn the ROIs off for right now. And let's uh, make it a little bit more contrasty. So I'm going to make that red. And I'm going to make this one blue. So we see in region 1, we've got more iron and less silicon than we do in region 1. Region 1 has more iron and less silicon. Region 2 has more silicon, less iron. Region 3, we see we have this peak here, which turns out to be zirconium. And also our peak over here, which turns out to be titanium. So that's this area here. And as soon as I click on it, the system brings up those maps so I can clearly see uh, that that is just related to that one phase in there. Clicking on map over here, the system will automatically switch to the image on the left and bring the maps up. So in this one collection, I can bring up any element at any time. I can overlay as many of them as I wish, simply by clicking them on or off. I can also extract spectrum at any location. And one of my other annotations, line, I can put a vector in any orientation. And now I can look at a line scan. So relative to my map, this is the digital line scan across there. And since we're live, that data is being updated. So as we pass through, we'll see more data coming in. If I wish, I can adjust this line simply by clicking on it. And using the plus minus keys, I can integrate so many vectors above and below that region. All right, so you ha and you have the zoomed up area here showing you where that profile is. You can also pick that up while you're collecting and look at different vector distributions. So we can look along any area in there and see exactly how it's changing. 
all while we're collecting. All right, so one collection, we've got elemental maps, spectrum, and line scans at any time. Once I'm satisfied with my statistics, and in this mode, since I'm running manually, I can stop the acquisition simply by clicking Stop. And now if I want, I can put this into my report simply by coming up here and saying Add to Report. So there's my template. So on the first, this is a two-page report. So on the first page, I have the overall image here. I have the composite map down here, and then my individual maps shown shown up here. And again, at this point, the way I've got this set up, since I didn't lock the frame, I can rearrange the size, shape of the maps within it. And then anything else I want to add. So if I want to add this overlay or this overlay to the image I can simply say click right and say add that to the report come into my spectrum here select all now come right mouse on the background here say add to report and I either can do a single spectrum or multiple or a list so each spectrum I have highlighted could be on a separate page, or if I do list, I'll have them overlaid. So now when I come up here and say show report, there's the f five spectrum overlaid. If I rather have them individual, I can say add to report and say multiple spectrum. And since they're all highlighted here, when I go to add report, each one will be individual like so and that's all placed into the report so when I copy the report to Word or convert it to a PDF all that data goes together once I'm satisfied with the spectrum stop the acquisition I can then save all the data going to the in and out control hit save and this is saved then as a Brooker cube file or BCF. I give it a name and when I call it back I'll still be able to add or extract new information from it at any time. The key thing when we're doing our maps is to make sure we have good statistics. So don't shortchange yourself, collect for a good period of time when you're doing your maps.